For instance, you might have a problem where you want to find the area between z is equal to 0 0.35 and z is equal to 1.85. Basically, let's say you had some problem trying to find the uh, probability of some event happening and it ends up being that you want to find the area under the curve between this value of z and this value of z. This is a different kind of problem that we've had to tackle before. So just to kind of illustrate what this is, if this is your normal distribution, like this, or your standard normal distribution, then what this is saying is, if you think about it, this is plus one and this is minus one, and this is two, and this is minus two. It's not totally symmetrical, I'm trying to do my best there. But the bottom line is, what I'm interested in is a area of point, or a z value of 0.35, which is down here somewhere, so this is, 0.35, and this is 1.85, which is over here somewhere. So this is 1.85, you see where those lie? And I'm trying to find the area between them. So that means I'm interested in the area that lies only between these values of z, right? So a lot of times I might have a problem where I don't wanna find the area off to the left. You know, a lot of times you don't want that. You wanna know the area between two values of z. but you want to use that same table that we've already done, so you, or that we've already used. And so you might look at this and say, well, I don't know how to do that because the table gives us the area to the left. So how do I find the area under the curve between two values? And the answer comes in the form of subtraction. Use your imagination. If I just look this value in the chart up, just 1.85, the answer I'm gonna get is gonna be the area under the curve all the way to negative infinity, all the way to this value. Right, so that's a big number, right? Now if I subtract from that, the answer I get the table from, from the table from this number, if I were to get this area, it would be only the area from here to negative infinity. So if I subtract those two answers I get from the table, I'm gonna be left with this guy right here. And that's essentially what you have to do when you try to find the area between two z values, you need to use subtraction. So the way you would do that is you would say the um, area is going to be equal to the area of z is or that you get as a result of looking at z is equal to 1.85 minus the area when you look at z is equal to 0.35. So you find the area that you get from the table from this answer, which is all of this, minus the area you get from looking at this one, which is all of this. When you do the subtraction, all you're left with is that one. Now at this point in the game, since I covered the last section, how to use the table, I'm going to assume that you know how to use the Z-chart table. I'm not gonna flash it up on the screen and show you how I'm getting every single answer. You should know by now from the last section that when I tell you, look, use a Z-chart table and look up 1.85, this one, 1.85, and give me the answer, you need to know to go look at 1.85 and how to, how to do that and get the answer out of the chart. All right, same thing with the negative values. So I'm not gonna show you that every time. So, uh, make sure you, you understand that, and if you don't, go back to the last section and review it. So when you look at the table at z is equal to 1.85, the answer you get is 0 0.9678, right? And then you subtract from that the area, or the area that you get from looking at z is equal to 0 0.35, which is 0 0.6368. All right, and so what you get is the area between those two points when you do the subtraction, 0 0.3310, that is the answer. So if I were to actually construct this and find the area under the curve only between these points, it would actually be this uh, answer right here. Notice the answer for these areas are always gonna be less than one because they're probabilities, and probabilities can only go between zero and one. If you take the area of the whole curve, it's only gonna give you one. So if you ever get a weird area down here, like 2.5 for the area, you've done something wrong. The area has to be a probability and it has to be between zero and one. All right, so let's get a little more practice with that over here. And let's say we wanna find the area between the following z values. z is equal to negative 1.78 and z is equal to negative 0.95. So first let's draw a picture. I actually encourage you to do this anyway. I'm doing it for you so you understand, but in the beginning, I actually encourage you to draw pictures of all this stuff anyway, because if you don't, you'll probably end up making a mistake at some point. So when we have something like this, that's our standard normal distribution. Um, this is negative one, this is negative two. 
right? And so the values that I care about are negative 0.95, which is right here. So I'll just put that uh, negative 0.95, so just right before the negative one, and negative 1.78, which is right here. So I'll say negative 1.78. So you see these kind, these these things are kind of compressed here a little bit. But you can look up here if I'm looking for the area between. Basically, all I care about is this little skyscraper of area that lie between them. So again, if I'm trying to find the area between two z values, it's going to give me a kind of a rectangular, well, the top is curved, but it's basically like a rectangular area there. I need to find the, the larger number is going to give me an area to the left of z, and then I find the other one, which is going to give me an area to the left of z. I subtract them. So what I'm going to have is the area is going to be the area z is equal to negative 0.95 minus the area z is equal to negative 1.78. Now again, I'm going to assume you know how to do this. If you look negative 0.95 up in the chart, the answer you get is 0 0.1711. And if you look z is equal to negative 1.78 in the chart, you're going to get an answer of 0 0.0375. So the area, when you take this number, which is bigger than this one, and you subtract them, is uh, 0 0.1336, and that is the area. Again, that's the area you would measure with geometry if you could construct this, or if you calculated it with calculus, that would be the exact answer you would get. Um, one thing I want to point out to you here is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm intentionally choosing, I, I'm drawing a picture, so I know that the larger answer from the table is going to be this one, because it has more area there, minus the smaller one from here. So I'm always getting a positive answer. But if you accidentally reverse the order of these and did this one minus this one, you're immediately going to know it's wrong because you're going to get a negative answer. If you ever subtract one of these guys and you get a negative area, you know that you've, you've done the backward subtraction because these, these answers here can only be positive. Probability can only be positive, and surface area can also only be positive. So if I were to do that, I would get negative 0.1336, and I would know I can just throw away that negative sign, and that's the, the correct answer that, that lies beneath it. So don't stress out too much in the direction you do the subtraction. If you do it backwards, you're going to know right away, because I guess what I'm trying to say. All right, so now we want to find the area when we look between z is equal to negative 3.47 and z is equal to 1.85, right? Now we can draw a picture of this as we've been doing before to make sure we're all on the same page. This is our distribution. We're not going to get too crazy about being accurate because ultimately we just want to visualize it. Positive 1.85 is going to be somewhere over here. Negative 3.47 is going to be somewhere way off to the left here. And so I'm trying to find the surface area that lies between these two things. So it's going to be a kind of a large number in the end of the day is what we should expect to get. Um, and so what we're going to do to find the area here is we're going to look up the area in the table when z is equal to 1.85. And then we will subtract from it the area when z is equal to negative 3.47. That's what we're going to do. And when you look up 1.85 in the table, you get 0 0.9678. Uh, and you'll subtract from that. When you look this guy up, look at what you get for the answer, 0 0.0003. It's such a small number because look where 3.47 is. When you look this value up in the table, you're just getting the area just to the left, right? When you look this in the table, you're getting everything off here. So when you subtract them, you only are left with what's in the middle. And so the area here is 0 0.9675, pretty darn close to 1. That's because we have almost the entire thing shaded. There's a little segment here not shaded. There's a little segment here not shaded. But notice it's, you know, and the 0.96 is pretty, getting pretty close to 1 there. So this section is basically teaching you how to use the table when you're trying to find the area under the normal distribution using z uh, scores, that when you're trying to find it between two values of z. You know, uh, we already know how to use the chart, and we only care about the area to the left of a value. And now we know how to find the area between two values. In the next section, we're going to look at another case 
Uh, and so we're just kind of breaking up the different categories here, giving you some practice. Um, none of this stuff is difficult. You just have to know how to use the charts and how to use the tools to make your life easy in statistics. And I think you'll agree once you get some practice, it's very, very easy to do. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.